who are both graduate students in library science at my university, who have been doing the work on the ground of this project this summer, and some of you have had a chance to speak with them in some interviews. So I'm grateful to their contributions and also heartened that we have new colleagues in the field who are going to be so educated about copyright. So the premise of the work that we are talking about here today is that library associations can play a key role in identifying the priority areas for collective action and providing professional development to catalyze and support libraries and library workshops in taking action. So collectively, we can figure out which are some of the issues that we need to take action on and then ensure that library workers have the skills and knowledge in order to take that action. A particular area of priority, and I think we can see that by your presence here today, was identified in the IFLA strategic plan for 2016 to 2021. Under strategic direction number two, information and knowledge, which said that we would build a framework to promote equitable access to information and knowledge in any format and in any place, and that we will establish capacity for libraries to act as catalysts of innovation, able to facilitate the creation and reuse of content by their communities, which had activity 2.2, advocating for equitable copyright framework. We see in the most recently developed IFLA strategy for 2019 to 2024, a continuation of this under strategic direction one, which has strengthened the global voice of libraries, in which 1.3 says that IFLA will work with library associations and libraries to identify key issues, key legal and funding challenges to their work and advocate for action. And I think we all know that copyright is definitely a key legal issue that does create some challenges for our work. And we need to advocate for change. Two years ago, during the World Library Information Congress in Poland in 2017, the Copyright and Other Legal Matters Committee and the Information Literacy Section collaborated to sponsor a day-long workshop titled Models for Copyright Education in Information Literacy Programs. At this event, we had an extensive number of speakers sharing with us models from around the globe about how individual libraries and library associations and library educators were working to ensure that the library workforce had a strong knowledge of copyright, and that we were educating our users in libraries about the rights and responsibilities under copyright as well. I'm grateful that we can say that just recently a special issue of the Journal of Copyright in Education and Librarianship was published with a number of the papers from that workshop um, made into scholarly articles on this topic. So we have a beginning knowledge base around what it will take for us to really understand what it takes to do copyright education within our information literacy or user education programs. Last year, IFLA released the IFLA Statement on Copyright Education and Copyright Literacy. This statement is available on the IFLA website in multiple languages. But I also invite you, if you have not gotten one on the way in, there are some copies available at the um, headset desk of this statement. I want to particularly pull out this definition of copyright literacy and copyright education because we are using these terms in particular ways within this project. So copyright literacy is defined as sufficient copyright knowledge to be able to take well-informed decisions on how to use copyrighted materials. And it includes understanding the structure, functioning, and implications of the copyright system as laws, practices, and user expectations evolve. Complementarily, Copyright education is the process of developing and updating our own copyright literacy. 
So we might sometimes say copyright training, copyright education, but the point is that we want our users to be copyright literate, and in order to ensure that this happens, we need to be providing copyright education. This statement is actually quite lengthy and goes through the roles and responsibilities of many different groups with respect to copyright literacy and copyright education. But it particularly calls upon library associations to play a specific role within this area of activity for IFLA. Particularly calling upon library associations to ensure that comprehensive copyright literacy is included in the competencies for library professionals, working with library educators and exploring the possibilities to provide guidelines or certification in this area. That library association should advocate for stronger exceptions and limitations in order to maximize access to information. That library associations act as a fora for the exchange of expertise and best practice to raise the standard of provision of copyright education and where possible produce practical guides on copyright literacy for practitioners as well as workshops and conferences. Finally, IFLA calls on library associations to collect and publish empirical data on copyright literacy initiatives for both pre- and in-service training to ensure continuous improvement of copyright education programs. And such data will, of course, also support our advocacy activities. The work that I am going to now focus on primarily relates to bullet point three, that library associations should act as an forum for the exchange of expertise and best practice in order to raise the standard of the provision of library education that is provided by our libraries throughout the globe. So this is the theory of impact for our copyright education framework and thinking. IFLA supports library associations and thereby library associations provide professional development to library workers and thereby library workers can educate library users. So IFLA itself will not be directly educating the millions of library users around the globe, but by supporting our library associations, which support our library workers, who then support our users, we can have the kind of global and diffuse impact on our users that we wish to have in our copyright education. So we are working with this framework of what does professional development for our library workers need to encompass. We need to make sure that our librarians, our library workers are themselves copyright literate, that they understand copyright, the kinds of decisions that will be made, the kinds of questions that must be asked, and how to work within these copyright systems in order to maximize access to information. We know, though, that also to turn their attention to educating library users, it is not enough to know a topic. You must also know how to teach that topic. And that is the library pedagogical literacy that we also need to develop. We need librarians who are comfortable and skilled as educators of copyright. Because that, those two components together inform and support a strong copyright education program for library users. So we needed to ask ourselves in this context then, how do library associations support copyright literacy? And how do they support librarian pedagogical literacy? And how do they support copyright education for library users? So we are taking an evidence-based approach to asking this question, not just Lisa's advice, but we really want to know what is already being done. So we asked key questions. How do library associations support copyright literacy professional development? 
How do library associations support copyright education professional development? And then, from the perspective of people working in this area or wishing to work in this area, what could IFLA do to support library associations in this work? What would be the most valuable contributions that IFLA could make to having the impact on library associations so they can have that impact on library workers, so they can have the impact on library users? So we developed a project plan that um, is multifaceted. And we have completed phase one of this project in summer 2019. My graduate assistant students and myself, we have identified library associations working in the area of copyright literacy and copyright education. We have analyzed the websites of these associations to see how they are representing that work. And then Jade and Allie have conducted interviews with key library association staff and members working in this area. So I want to again thank everyone who has helped us with that. Phase two of this work is intended now to be a survey that will go to all known library associations. Just a small number. <laughs> all library associations in the world which will ask them to report on their copyright literacy, their copyright pedagogy, their copyright education activities. We will be sending this survey out later this fall. It is being developed based on what we learned during the case studies, which have enabled us to understand a full breadth and depth of the kinds of issues that library associations are facing. I will be coordinating as well communication with the Management of Library Associations section, which I will meet with this afternoon, as well as the Copyright and Other Legal Matters Committee, who will also be able to advise continuing on this project. The goal is that in 2020, we will begin to develop then materials that support building strong library associations for copyright education. So I think you can see uh, case studies to inform good survey design. We ask all of you to help us to get a large result to our survey so we truly have a global perspective and input on this topic. And in response to that global feedback, it was becoming very evidence-based as we see with the last vision and strategic process that we will then be able to identify what IFLA can do to develop the materials that are most needed across the globe and ways that we can also share materials that different associations have created. So what have we learned from our case study? We contacted 28 library associations in 25 different countries to ask if we saw, based on their websites, if they would be available to do an interview. Six were able to participate this summer. So we are grateful to our um, interviewees in New Zealand, Liber in Europe, Germany, Australia, Canada, and Sweden. One of the things that we heard from many people is they were hesitant to be interviewed because they felt they did not have as much activity as they wished to have. And so we have some emails um, instead of the case studies from other regions of the world. So our preliminary results of the case studies, what we know so far about copyright literacy, copyright education, et cetera. First, library association websites do not represent the breadth and depth of activity in this area. I think many library associations are very understaffed, and so they do not always have time to make a full web presence. So I think one of our questions is whether we are able to get as much credit for our copyright leadership in the world if we do not fully represent our leadership on our websites. We do know that some associations do have materials on their members only websites because through the case studies, 
people were sharing with us materials that are only available to their members. So this raises some questions around what is open, what is a member benefit. Our second preliminary findings is that library association staff expertise and effort varies. Not all library associations have a staff member or program officer with the sufficient copyright literacy and copyright education knowledge themselves to provide this service to their members. And so we see that in a number of associations, this is very much a member-led activity. Um, so sometimes this work is member-led, sometimes it is staff-led, but in either case, we are seeing good partnerships between the staff and the members reflecting their respective expertise. The third preliminary finding is that library associations are very focused on copyright advocacy and library worker copyright literacy, but with almost none or very minimal effort on copyright education. And so we heard many times that this is the next area that people would like to develop. And this started us thinking, as you'll see in a second, about a way for us to think about the development of library associations with respect to copyright literacy and copyright education. Our fourth preliminary finding is that library associations are interested in copyright literacy education and see this as a future growth area of importance. And of course, this was quite reassuring because it would be hard for us to justify a global survey if having talked to people individually, they were like, nah, we're not interested. So people are very interested in this topic and that provides us incentive and inspiration to continue the work and the research that we are doing here. So out of our preliminary findings in our case study, we have the development of what we are calling a maturity model of library association copyright activity. That's a lot of words, I know. I am a professor, we have to name things in fancy ways. Um, but the maturity model says that we're starting to see that library associations begin their work in the respect of copyright with respect to awareness, raising awareness of the issues around copyright within their membership. Then they tend to add in advocacy. Now that we are aware of this topic, we need to advocate for the library perspective and the library user. And it seems that what happens when people start to advocate is they immediately hear demand from their users that the, that the, I'm sorry, their members, that the members themselves need copyright literacy education. They need copyright literacy for library workers. If we're gonna advocate for copyright perspectives, we need to know what we're talking about. And so we see this building as awareness, advocacy, and literacy. And that is where we are seeing that most associations have gotten to with a real, potential and desire for a full maturity program which will include that education component. That putting librarians in a position to educate our library users about copyright, about their rights, about their responsibilities. This is a developing model of copyright maturity model for library associations. So we will refine all of these models further as we continue to do the interviews and then move into the uh, survey and see if we see these results verified within this. But this is our, our preliminary interpretation of the case study results where this, we are starting to see this pattern. And I think the other advantage of this pattern that we're starting to see is you can see how this could become the basis of some sort of training for library association leaders on how to build your copyright activity uh, program area by thinking about these four components. But we will further refine this because it is preliminary at this point. So in phase two, 
as I mentioned, which will happen, oops, fall 1919, that would be a long time ago. That would be fall 2019, I apologize. Um, which was, of course, um, in about November, October to November, we expect to be sending this survey out. And it will be a global survey focused on asking library associations their areas of activity with respect to copyright advocacy, copyright literacy, and copyright education. And so we will be seeking to know what library associations are doing in this area and asking people to share examples of the projects and programs that they have going on. And if they are not yet having all of these things, what do they hope to do? And then of course there will be that part about what can IFLA do to support you? Because going back to our theory of change or our theory of impact, IFLA wants to support those library associations so those library associations can support library workers who will then hopefully educate our library users. So I have a few questions for discussion and dialogue but we don't have to focus only on these. Thoughts around what drives library association activity in copyright literacy and copyright literacy education. What do you want to know from the global survey? Help me write that survey. And what do you even think right now without the survey results, just from your own experience, what could IFLA begin to provide that would help your library association, your librarians, begin to further their work with respect to copyright education for our library users? So I also will be happy to take questions about the project, the workshop, the journal issue. You can see that we're working strategically and systematically to build this area of activity and we really want it to be as useful as possible to the IFLA membership. So this is your opportunity to do a participatory design and give input on this. I am going to change to the next slide as well because I want to give you my contact information. If you would feel more comfortable or you have a longer response that you would like to give, I would, be, I would welcome your response to me at either of my email addresses. Um, I didn't put Twitter up there, but I'm Lisa Librarian on Twitter. Um, or we can even do a phone call if you want to talk. So I'll just leave that on the slide um, while we begin our discussion. So I might have in my head been anticipating round tables. We do not have round tables, so we're going to go with a more formal. But there are mics at both um, midpoints in the two aisles. Please come